Yesterday I voted and being a Londoner, I voted for who I want as London Mayor. And it reminded me that I like my democracy, local, national and international. I like having elected representatives at all of those levels of scale because they have different challenges. In London, housing is a major, major issue. On the national scale, I care about the NHS and mental health and investment in research and innovation and the tax system. But my country isn't in isolation. It lives in an interdependent world. And so it has to be making deals with the countries around it in cross-border healthcare, in data standards, in air pollution. And for those, we are very fortunate in Europe that we have something like the EU, which lets us do democracy at that international scale to handle, you know, the big beast of, of issues that affect 28 countries. And so what we have there is we have our government represented in the council, but we also get to elect members of the European Parliament. And this means that for legislation that affects us all, we, we've got a, a mechanism to handle it. We often get people coming onto our page, people who are campaigning for out, saying that the EU is undemocratic because it's got undemocratically elected officials in the Commission who set laws that we all have to swallow or the Parliament just rubber stamps. And this is totally clueless because the Commission only proposes legislation when it's been asked to. Who asks it to? Our governments. Like, for example, in science, it's often our science ministers, which meet every about four times a year, in something called the Competitiveness Council, where they talk about the R&D of their countries and what would add value for all of us. Where do those science ministers get their ideas from? From our science communities back in all of our countries that get together and push that through. So the Commission doesn't dictate anything to us, we tell them what to do. And then, when they propose legislation, it's got to be good enough to pass back through that council and then also through the Parliament, where other aspects of European society can have their say in the legislation. And that's how it's done. It's big and complex and there's lots of talking and there's lots of voting, but it's democratic. And that's how you do teamwork on an international scale. Now, what happens if we leave? And we decide, oh, I want to pull back all of our sovereignty just into our kind of like little island make sure that we don't have to agree rules with other people. And then we think, wait a second, we want to do deals on cross-border health care, we want to do deals on air pollution, we want to do deals on, on data standards and, and business standards for the sake of our own businesses and our own citizens. What then? Well, then we're outside the big democratic mechanism of the EU, we're outside trying to lobby the ministers trying to lobby the democratically elected MEPs of other countries. And that's not very democratic, is it? And we won't have elected officials in that process. There'll be government appointed lobbyists trying to swing the opinions of, of, of a big block of nations that have already made their decisions through, through good processes. And so we're absolutely robbing ourselves of a layer of democracy here. So, like I said, I like my democracy local, national and international. I want to keep all three of those layers and that's one of the reasons why the next time I vote will be a vote for Remain.